So I'm here with my main man, Tony. Um, we met, how many years ago? Like two and a half? Probably, yeah. Yeah, we met about two and a half years ago on Instagram. And um, what the? This guy just ran a red light. He's almost got T-bone. Yeah, we're, we're actually in Dallas, Texas right now. So Dirty D. Yeah, my first time in Dallas. And um, unfortunately, the three of us, me, Tony, and Hugo, were going to try to play, but... Hugo is just way too far, Texas and um, yeah, Texas is ginormous. He's in Houston. Big up, big shout out to um, Hugo. Um, I miss you, Hugo. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Tony is a professor at a university in Dallas, and he's one of the top professors in the country. Uh, he's won all these awards, <laughs> and all the all the Negative. college girls love him. Negative. And I'm just kidding. He is married. How many kids do you have? Two kids. He has two kids and um, five and almost four. Okay. So my son just started kindergarten and my wife just started her teaching career. Oh, so awesome. between my son going to school obviously five days a week, my daughter does preschool three days a week, and my wife's teaching five days a week, obviously. I'm basically taking care of the kids and everything, groceries, all this stuff twenty four seven because my wife's she's at work by, you know, seven twenty and she's not home till after dinner's made and eating oh. pretty much. So it's yeah, it's a it's a tough semester, a tough year for Golf, like I said, I haven't played in over a month. I haven't even swung a club in over a month. Yeah, but what's your handicap? Uh, right now, it says five point five. Really? So yeah. So without playing for a month, it'll probably be at seven. So you're still yeah. good. <laughs> this guy's talking all yeah, this. Yeah, but, but the goal is scratch. So and yeah. I'm I'm a perfectionist. Like that's one of the things, and I'll transition to what got me into golf is I love to try and perfect something. Yeah. And the harder it is, the more the more I love it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like yeah. growing up, you like a challenge. Oh, absolutely. You love a challenge. Golf's the ultimate challenge. Yeah. Growing up, we didn't have a lot of money, um, and so I played the free sports. You know, I did basketball and ran track. And it wasn't until so yeah, I get left. It wasn't until junior year of high school. I think it was junior year. One of my buddies was like, "Hey, man, we're gonna go try out for the golf team." And I was like, "We don't play golf. What are you talking about? Try out for the golf team?" He was yeah. like, "Dude." They get out all day Monday for tournaments. You don't have to go to school on Monday. I said, let's go play golf. <laughs> so we did that. And, you know, it was small town uh, high school. So it was really much like the rich kids and everybody else, you know. And yeah. the rich kids were the ones that played. And Now, so where did you where did you grow up at? I grew up just outside of Houston in Sealy, Texas. Oh, really? Yeah, home of Eric Dickerson. Oh, home nice. Of running back. Yep. I didn't and, even know uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know so, why I thought you was from the Northeast. No, no, no. no. I, I did uh, live on Long Island for a year. Oh, okay. uh, my first, so we got my first professor job was at Farmingdale State College, which was like ten minutes away from Beth Page Black, the famous, you know, public yeah, yeah, golf course. I, yeah, it's on my vlog. Yeah, so I never got to play there while I was there, though, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I was doing in the Northeast. But yeah, so we played, uh, and we got to practice. We got to play maybe nine holes, three or four times a week. And, yeah. Uh, but I wasn't really any good. The clubs I was playing with, my dad had a set of persimmon woods and spalding, spalding woods and spalding irons, and the irons were like butter knives, you know, with like wow. the leading edge that's so sharp that you yeah. hit it fat and it's gonna lay sod over it. Yeah. And so you cut steak with those. Absolutely. Those yeah. And so I, I was out there having fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know, I started to really enjoy the game. And actually, one of the first guys that gave me a lesson and this ties into research stuff, was one of my buddies, her dad, black male, he played yeah. golf and he took me out because he heard I was getting into it. Black male taught black you male, how to, that's right. He was one of the first, yeah, he was one of the first, Outstanding. he was actually the first guy that took me out and actually was like working with me on stuff. Oh yeah, wow, so that's awesome. It was cool. And I had a white male teach there me how go. to There you go, look at that, <laughs> that's <play>. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't teach me, he we were co-workers and he right. got me, yeah, he yeah. took me out. But, uh, but yeah, enough about me, but yeah. no, it's all about awesome. Tony right now. Negative. So, so, but yeah, so that's, and so I, you know, I played for two years on the high school team and I probably got down to a low nineties golfer, you know, yeah, that's okay. my, I couldn't afford to play or practice outside of the season when we got to play for free. Yeah. So then transition many years later, well not many years later, it was three years later or so I was in college and I was at A&M, Giga Maggie's and, um, my that's buddy. where that's where you went to, that's uh, where I went to school, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. So undergrad, my, right? And undergrad, master's, and PhD. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, they got all my PhD. Money. You guys hear that? Yeah. Play a hating degree. That's right. <laughs> that's awesome, man. So that's where I went to school, and so while I was there during my undergrad, 
one of my buddies in the, the program I was studying was like, hey man, you play golf? I was like, I like to, I just can't afford it, you know? And he's like, yeah. well, I work at the course on campus and we get to play every day and hit balls for free as much as you want. And I was like, word? And he's like, yes. I was like, well, well let me go do that. So I got a job working there. And man, I worked my butt off. I played and practiced all the time. And yeah. I ended up getting down to a, you know, a 70s golfer consistently. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and then grad school and I got married, we had kids, you know, and it just kind of, it takes a lot of your time. That's kind of my journey. My whole chasing scratch thing, the whole goal of it all was just to continue to challenge myself and set a goal for something. And to have this documentary, basically, all this, you know, the social media stuff and everything, just to like show my kids one day, hey, look, daddy had a goal, here's what he did, here's all the hard work it took to try and get there. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, kids, they, they don't think their parents can do anything when they get into like high school. Oh, you, you yeah, your has been, yeah, you're washed you're up. Old timer. You know, that's right, right, right. So that's kind of the goal is to have something to share and show. And yeah. I mean, along the way, I've, I've met so many great people, you know, yourself and you go and yeah. uh, a guy who actually lives in Rockwall where, where near I live named James. And uh, we've played and I've gotten to know so many great people just through social media. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, Colin McCarthy, <laughs> the trick shot, you know, golf coach, he and I are good friends. And, it's just, I've met so many wonderful people through this yeah. silly social media thing that I just started for fun, just a personal, you know, documentary. And but one of the things that got me interested in Tony lately was that he had to write a thesis. So, uh, yeah, so my master's thesis. Um, yeah, his master's thesis. My master's thesis was looking at, is golf considered a white sport? Because, you know, people talk about it like, yeah. okay, it's a rich, old, rich white man sport. The stereotypes. But there wasn't really any data to support that. It was just kind of a stereotype so that was what yeah. my master's thesis was looking at was what do people associate with the game of golf the characteristics and then how do they correspondingly relate those characteristics to different racial groups yeah. um, and what I found was yes golf is considered white sport yeah. for the most part yeah. and then my uh, my dissertation yeah that's where I got into uh, black women in golf and I studied a grassroots golf program looking to grow the game amongst minority women um, spent a lot of time with them, interviews, observations, and, yeah. you know, it, that's kind of my, my overarching research line is growing the game of golf and understanding the experiences of racial minorities and women, the most underrepresented groups in the game. Yeah. Uh, because to those of us that know and love this game, we know all the great things it can do, right? Of you know, course, from yeah. a lifetime physical activity standpoint to just sociology, getting to know people from various backgrounds yeah. and, and you know, trying to heal some of these issues. Job opportunities, Job opportunities, networking, networking yep, yeah. all those things. And yeah. so you have this, it's 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 almost like this this really cool tool that's been kind of strangleholded by a few a certain few, class of people. That's right, a few people. I mean, look at the yeah. expense of the game. The game's not getting any cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that the price is going up because less people are playing. Right. So. Yep. And more um, golf courses closed. are closing. Yeah. yeah, more golf courses are closing. Yep. And, um, Clothes are getting more expensive, but the Which actual equipment, yeah. the equipment is kind of was stagnant, and I yeah. think now it's going up. The last like three years, it's been going up like well, and what to people, get a putter yeah. like it's four hundred dollars. Yeah, like, so seriously, that's yeah, what people ridiculous. don't realize about golf equipment is that the USGA and the RNA and the governing bodies of golf they limit how far a golf ball or a, a driver can hit the ball. Yeah, you yeah. can't get it any faster than it yeah. already is without it being illegal. So. Every year, and this is no knock to any of the big manufacturers because they're trying to make money selling golf clubs. But every year they're talking about tailor made. This is why I stopped buying tailor made drivers. Yeah, I don't buy tailor made. I'm like, either. come on, man. Every year we're supposed to hit it 15 yards farther than that. We should be hitting it 400 yards by now. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's not that's not legit. And they you know? come out like every every six months. I'm yeah. like, guys, this is so yeah. I stopped buying tailor made stuff. Yeah. But, um, Callaway does the same thing. Yeah, so what you can do is you can buy used equipment two or three years old, and it's just as good as the new stuff for the most part. Exactly. I mean, you're getting a little bit more forgiving, but and you can you can buy it for 125 bucks for a driver versus 500 dollars, you know. And so yeah, anyway. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, yeah. Go back to what you were you were talking about earlier. You you said you know look at this. See, people are so stupid. You were talking about more recently, and then you got into the research and the dissertation and all that stuff, and I just kind of went off on it. But. Yeah. No, no, I was just, you know, piggybacking on the whole equipment thing and um, and how, you know, my, my channel is, is small. Obviously, I've been doing it going on three years. I don't really have a lot of subscribers. I don't have, it's you tough. know, people banging down my door like, hey, we want you to uh, use our product, you know? Right, and I'm right, like, right. it's fine. That's why I wanted to start. 
one of the main reasons I wanted to start my channel is the fact that I don't really see any people of color right. on YouTube talking about golf. And I've only been playing for nine years, never had a lesson. I know it shows at times. <laughs> but I normally play pretty well um, if I'm fully rested. Right. That being said, a lot of my vlogs, I'm traveling like right. long distances. Like, take for example today. You flew in this morning. Yeah, I flew in this morning. Like, I got up at 3 a.m. I got I caught my 7 722 flight right and we're playing at 420 or 442 I mean 1142 yeah. a.m. today so and you literally woke up got on the plane got off the plane and you're not even in your golf clothes were you? yeah yeah so I'm gonna change at the course I may I may buy a shirt if it looks cool because this course is supposed to be one of the top public yeah, courses I've in never the, played in the here, country so we'll see. I looked it up last night and um, I talked to a buddy my club fitter Mike Roush you're gonna get a shout out here he, uh, yeah, he Mike Roush, yo, hold me goes. down. <laughs> hold me down with some uh, yeah. grips, kid. That's right. You know what I mean? So <laughs> he, uh, he's played here before, and he said there's not much to it as far as you just got to keep the ball and play off the tee. Yeah. And then one of the things I noticed is that some of the par fours, they force you to really lay back pretty far, so you have a really long approach shot in. So oh, really? So water and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's I supposed love to be water pretty courses. good. Yeah. You like donating to the water gods? <laughs> no, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Uh, I, I rarely go in the water, knock on wood, when I see uh, so. Yeah. But, but yeah, guys, so um, I just wanted to give you guys some info on Big Tone. Um, great guy, professor, PhD. Playing with my first first PhD today, too. Oh, so wow. That's pretty cool. So hopefully he doesn't use his mind to <laughs> manipulate the holes and all his other <laughs> strategy and stuff. Uh, we could talk but, stats, yeah. golf stats, but no, yeah. all that doesn't matter if you can't hit the balls. So. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, so thanks again for tuning in, and um, check, Tony, what's your, um, what's so, your Instagram? Yeah, ins uh, Instagram, it's at underscore chasing underscore scratch, so that's what it is. Most people, I tried when I first started a thing, like just yeah. chasing scratch, it's been taken. Oh, chasing awesome. scratch, chasing underscore scratch, taken. You know how yeah. it is, like everything just gets taken. Yeah, so. but, but I'll, I'll put it up, um, I'll put his information up in the description, guys, and... Um, yeah, thanks again for tuning in, and we're uh, we're gonna have some good stuff coming up. Um, in November. That's when I go live with my company. So nice. hopefully you guys support. And um, peace. Let's do it.